Today I launched Code Counter, which is a custom code and plugin dedicated area over on our school community. If you've been living under a rock and you haven't heard of school with a K, then I'd recommend popping down into the description, adding yourself to our waiting list, and I can send you more information about it without any obligation to sign up. To celebrate this launch, I'm gonna share a very quick and easy Squarespace plugin that you can use on your site. There will also be the code in the description, although it's only one line. And I'll show you how, A, we can navigate to the custom code section in Squarespace, B, add our custom code in, and C, probably most importantly, how we can use the property identifier in Google Chrome, then drop that into ChatGPT so it can do the hard work and create a code for us. This is a no-code code tutorial, if that makes sense. So if you've seen the custom CSS section in the Squarespace platform, and you've always been a little bit curious as to what it is, but you don't want to dive in straight away and mess up your website, then this is the video for you. Let's crack on. First of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to Bernie, who's both a client and a member of our Pixel Haze community over at school. She's allowed me to use her website as an example to demonstrate what I'm talking about here. And what we're going to do is take one of these blocks in a list section and make it rounded to match the other shapes that I've got elsewhere in the site. So Bernie did some of the legwork herself with this, but I've been coaching her throughout the entire process, taking her vision and putting it into a final website. This site went live today, so another course for celebration. And I'm going to show you how these sections were built first before we go into the list section and add our custom code. Relatively recently, within the last 12 months, we can now start easily putting rounded corners on shapes. So this is a rectangle shape and we can see we've got a 30 pixel rounded corner. So we want to mirror that in our custom code. Same then for these sections here, using either outlines or solid colors to have that rounded, softer, more hands-on feel to it than it being too corporate, too cold, too obtuse. That's why we went down this route. And before the custom code, and I'll re just remove it for a second without saving, just to show you what it looks like without the rounded corners. It just didn't feel like it fitted with the rest of the design. So if I exit the editor mode at the moment and I press forward slash on the keyboard, we've got this very handy Squarespace quick search. And from here, we can type in CSS and go to the custom CSS section because I couldn't honestly tell you where it is in the left menu now because Squarespace keep moving it. If I was to guess it would be in pages, then website tools. Ah, there we are. Custom CSS in there. And this website was built with only one line of custom code. So it is possible to create a bespoke looking site without too much code or any at all. And if we just change that back to zero, we can see that those corners now have gone back to square. Because this is a live site, I'm not going to press save. We're going to put it back to 30. So it matches up elsewhere in the website. That's essentially it. But the challenge most of the time is finding that string. So anyone who's done some front end development or custom code, you would look at this and think, okay, that's really easy. And it would only take me a couple of minutes to do that. This tutorial video is for those who are too afraid to have done this before and they want to add a little bit of customization. A couple of caveats though. Don't go overboard on custom code because it will just create more and more headaches for you. Especially now Squarespace is more flexible, more fluid, should I say, and easier to work with. So all of these sections here, like being able to make pill-shaped buttons, that's all far more customizable than even Squarespace 7.0 was. If I switch to mobile view, this is all being tested so it works on mobile as well. The reason there's a lot of space above and below here is because the next one is a lot longer. So we've been speaking with Bernie about how we can maybe trim down some of these testimonials just so that they're roughly the same length. So that's not a coding or a design issue. It's more of a getting the content to fit type of issue. Anyway, that's what we're going to look to do. And I'm going to head over to SquareForge and our playground on here. This is our tool to create rapid prototype templates in Squarespace and it's available information in the description. And if we go and find our playground, this is a page where I just try any old thing out. It's not live, it's hidden from Google. And I'm gonna to go to add a new section and let's see if we can add a list. First of all, I've got to find one. This will do. And we can see that the list sections look slightly different. We've got the option to edit content as opposed to building this out using the Fluid Engine and just put in one image block, one text block below. This is all managed within the list section in Squarespace. And we can see we've got three items here. So what I'm going to do is change the design format of this section from simple list to, I think, carousel. I'm going to centrally align it. We're going to remove adjacent slides. Keep the infinite scroll on. So it means when we click the arrow, it'll just keep flicking through them. And with the max columns to one. We're also going to remove the image. So if we go to elements, we can 
remove the title and the button that goes on the bottom. And we're going to put it so it doesn't show the image. So now we've got something more akin to our design here. Although we had an image in here, it was much smaller. This one, we're going to go with no image just to keep it really simple. And again, go back to design. And I think under style, we can then set it so it's got a card background. That's the bit that we're after. So we can see this card effect doesn't have any rounded corners. And I believe there's an option now to change it. the arrows to the bottom. So they're not interfering with that block. We're going to put some nice big padding on that section. So it just takes up a nice bit of space, maybe medium. Yep, that'll work. So we go back to that. I forget the size and space then we can change it to inset. That means it keeps more of a fixed shape. The content width isn't changing it. Space between elements is vertical space. And then we've got vertical padding, which is padding above and below that block. So there we go. We've now got our card effect that we've rebuilt. Something more akin to this design here. Go back to desktop. So we can see that we've mirrored that essential shape. I know the arrows are left and right on that one, but we're not looking to build something exactly the same. So if we do edit the section and the colors, let's go for something with it's a little bit more obvious the join between them so we can test it. And we'll go for that format. I'm going to save it at this point. Now we've got our structure. And let's exit that and bring up our CSS. At this stage, I'm going to copy some of the HTML underlying in this section. So hopefully ChatGPT will know what to target. Just create a bit of space there ready. I'm now going to go to this arrow in the top right hand corner to go into preview mode. Right click and inspect. With the property inspector window open, we can click on this button here in the top left hand corner of it. And now we can isolate the areas that we want to select. We wanted this list item here. So you don't even need to know what this means. It helps, of course, to troubleshoot and to do more complex custom code. If the more you know, the easier that becomes. But as I said, this is a beginner's tutorial. So let's right click on this and copy element. Head over to ChatGPT. And now I'm going to just put a little prompt in. And now paste in the code that we copied, the element. So not only does it copy the element, it copies everything nested within there. There's a reason I don't copy and paste the whole source code for the entire page. One, there's so much of it that ChatGPT would reject it because there's so much. And B, it wouldn't know which element we're talking about. So that's why this little arrow here is really important just to isolate the section that we want the code for. Now we get ChatGPT to do the hard work because what I used to have to do is maybe a little bit of trial and error. Is it that element? No, we move on to another one. And there is a case with this as well. So that's different to the code I had before. This goes to show sometimes it doesn't always work. So let's try that first and see if that works. If it doesn't work, we'll try it again. So I'm now going to put it in that custom code by just pasting it in and we can see it's not quite latching onto it. Okay. So you go to ChatGPT. That looks like the one. So we can see it, it hasn't picked it up first time. Last time I did this exact tutorial, it picked up the right area, but let's now copy this code. Basically border radius of 30. If we wanted to target just one corner, we do it clockwise where it goes top, right, bottom, left. So it would be 30 pixels, zero, zero, zero. If we just wanted around on the top right hand corner of it. And there's a little note in here about why it's added in the overflow. So it doesn't overflow on other areas that may or may not be needed. So let's try that as well. There we go. Our rounded corners are now added to that block without us needing to write a single line of code. Now, a couple of caveats. One is it certainly helps that I understand this code that it's creating. So it's just a lazy option for me because it means I don't have to go in and try a couple of different div classes, which are this bit here to identify the right area to apply the rounded corners. This certainly will not work on everything you're looking to do. And the final point is always spend time looking to see if you can do it within the platform first before adding it in anywhere else. So what I will do is I will copy this custom code here. I will paste it in the description of this video 
so you can try it yourself. But I strongly recommend have a play around with your own sites and try it. And you can always just create a demo Squarespace site and just try adding some custom code into that without messing up or interfering with your live website. Hope you found this helpful and I'll catch you next time. Cheers. If you want to say in the future direction of the content that I'll be creating at Pixel Haze Academy and to get involved in our community, all you need to do is leave me your email address. We're looking to create our first community in the coming weeks and I'm going to be throwing everything I've got at it. That includes our Moonshot Transformation Program, our entire library of online courses, the opportunity to engage with me in regular group sessions. There's more information in the description and I'd love to hear your thoughts on how we can develop this. Thanks again and I'll catch you soon. Cheers.